We're speaking about the debt crisis in Europe, its central bank, and the central bank's role in fixing the region's economies. Nobel laureate professor Robert Mundell of Columbia University is my guest for the hour. Also, I want to bring in Uri Dadush. He is the director of international economics at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Uri is the co-author of the report Paradigm Lost, the Euro in Crisis. Ori Dadusha has also served at the World Bank as the Director of International Trade. Ori, good to have you with us on Bloomberg. And as you were listening previously to the conversation having to do with the European economies and how they have to adjust to new austerity, how do European economies increase domestic demand? They can't just export their way out of this if the euro remains at its current level. Yes, uh, um, that, that's correct. And, uh, uh, obviously, uh, monetary policy is already uh, very loose in Europe, and uh, uh, fiscal policy is uh, uh, tightening. However, it looks like the European economies are uh, picking up quite well in the core, in the center of Europe, uh, largely driven by exports and most of those exports go into emerging markets. So overall, that's not the big issue in Europe right now. The aggregate growth rate, it's the differential between the core and the periphery. Professor Mandel, as Ori was just describing, the differential between periphery Europe yeah. and core Europe, how yeah. does periphery Europe then work its way out of this? Do they sell assets? Do they cut entitlements? Well, of course, uh, <coughs> if they... They have huge assets, but Greece has thousands of islands, <laughs> but they're not going to sell those assets. They, so, those are sovereign assets, and unfortunately those can't be, someone said, once said, sovereignty is the last asset to be pawned. But if you think of it in those terms, if you took one or two of those islands <clears throat> and, and capitalized them, it would be enough to pay off all all, all the Greek debt. So that at least shows that the situation is not as vital, is not as, as uh, deadly as it otherwise seems. What about entitlement <clears throat> programs, though? Well, entitlements are, uh, I think, the that was the major problem, that entitlements <clears throat> shot up after Greece joined the euro, and uh, I think they have to be cut back. I mean, I think, but that's the politically difficult thing for any government to do. Ori Dadush, what about the political effects of the crisis in Europe? I mean, is it possible that you'll find a situation where, as you described, you have periphery Europe operating at a different speed than core Europe, but that means different political reaction from the populations? Well, you are seeing this at the moment. Uh, you have a polarization of the politics in Europe. Uh, in Finland, uh, uh, the right-wing parties uh, gain votes because, in part because uh, they have uh, voiced uh, their opposition to bailouts. Um, uh, the similar threats are present in other parts of Europe, like in uh, uh, France, for example. Um, at the same time, in the periphery, you have uh, uh, governments uh, losing elections, as happened in Portugal, and uh, uh, going down precipitously in the opinion polls, as is happening in Greece. In Ireland, of course, the government changed. So uh, you have a polarization of the politics, which is uh, uh, quite dangerous. Or what about the countries in periphery Europe that have pegged their currency to the euro, such as uh, Estonia, for example? Do you think they will cut that peg? Well, uh, uh, Estonia has uh, uh, just uh, uh, decided to join the euro area. And uh, uh, Latvia is uh, an example of a country that has remained outside the euro area with a pegged exchange rate and uh, undergone a tremendous uh, recession uh, from which it seems to be emerging. Uh, Latvia, in a sense, has shown All right. that we, it is Unfortunately, possible. Ori Dadush, we have to leave it there. I want to thank you very much for joining us. We've got more on our special look at the euro. This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg.